All right, so you'd look at the picture on your quiz, and then you would tell me which property is being shown by the picture. Number four says find the value of x that makes quadrilateral makes the quadrilateral a parallelogram. So we have side lengths. What do we know about sides of a parallelogram? They're congruent. Opposite sides are congruent. Good. So some students would try to set these two equal, 2x and 2x. Though technically the sides do equal, what would happen if I set 2x equal to 2x? It would cancel out. It would be awkward and it's not going to work. So you're going to set the other sides equal. 3x plus 2 equals, whoop, equals 5x minus 6. I'm going to move my smaller x, which here is 3. So 2 equals 2x minus 6. What do I do next? Add 6. Good. So 8 equals 2x, and x equals 4. That's the answer. You can go ahead and flip. Oh, so like, you basically combine the like terms. I mean, you see what I'm saying? No. So, 4x is not the same thing as x equals 4. But what you would do is you would plug it in. 2 times 4 is 8. So the length of this one is 8. And the length of this one is 8. That makes sense? Um, find the indicated measure. So what shape is this? Look at it on your paper. Hopefully you wrote it down. This tells you everything. Yeah, it's a parallelogram. You need to make sure you read the directions when it comes to the quiz on Tuesday. <clears throat> and um, so you know which properties apply because it, sometimes it could be a rectangle, sometimes it could be a rhombus, sometimes it could be a parallelogram. How did I know this was not a rectangle or a square? What does it not have? Right, right angles. So the option was limited. So. We're going to find the measure of AD. Is AD a side or a diagonal? It is a side. What do we know about sides? The opposites are congruent. So opposite of AD is BC, so the length is 7. We're on yesterday's notes. Um, BD is the next thing we're going to find. So a side or a diagonal? It's a diagonal. So what is the only length we're given... In 10.2. 10.2. What is 43? An angle. So an angle is not going to be your side length. Okay? So we have 10.2, which is from D to E. So what will from E to B be? 10.2. 10.2. So we want to length the whole, of the whole line. What are we going to do with those two numbers? Add them, Add them combine them. So we're going to have 20.4. Next, we want A, B, C. All right, so we're going to find A, B, C, which is this entire angle. Um, we are given 120. If all of angle A is 120, what relationship will angle A and angle B have? They're consecutive, which makes them supplementary. So you're going to do 180 minus 120, which is 60. Good, so the whole angle there is 60. The last one we find is D, B, C. So it's going to be this angle. What do we think? 43. Why is it 43? They are alternate interior, which makes them the same measure. Good job. All right, we're going to turn to the next page and work. Actually, I think you're going to skip the next page completely, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you look at my page on the screen, I wrote all of the parallelogram properties for you and all of the rhombus properties so that we could reference either of them. Um, because a rhombus is a parallelogram, it has these four properties as well. I highly recommend you always read the directions because sometimes some of these numbers won't necessarily be in the picture. Either there wasn't room or I just, it was not there. So it says BCA is 44 degrees. Do we have that in our picture? We do. Uh, the length of AB is 9. We got that. And uh, the length of AE is 7. We got that. So we're going to move on. We want to find the length of BC. Is this a side or a diagonal? It's a side. Um, what do we know about the sides of a rhombus? 
They're all congruent. So if all the sides are the same length, the side of BC will be 9. Good, 9. AC, side or diagonal? Diagonal. So we know a couple things. Diagonals bisect each other. Diagonals are perpendicular. Diagonals bisect angles. So which one of these is going to help us figure out the full length? Yeah, they bisect each other. So you have half of the line, right, which is 7. So what's the other half going to be? 7. So then the full length? 14. The last one is ADC. What is the only angle we're given? 44. Um, so if you look, it's not the entire angle, but you could find the other piece. What do we know about the angles sitting at the diagonal? They're bisected. So if the right half is 44, then the left half is 44. So then what's the measure of the entire angle? 88. So the reason we did this, we want to find our left corner. What relationship will D and C have? They're supplementary because they're consecutive. So you're going to do 180 minus 88, which makes 92. 92. You're going to flip to page 4, I believe. Maybe. Nope. Same page. I don't know why it says page 4. It's at the bottom. What shape do we have here? We have a rectangle. So what could I draw on this rectangle that's not already there? Oh, we can draw our right angles. So go ahead and draw them in. All right. Um, let's check to make sure every piece of information is in the shape. We have the measure of HFG is 31 degrees. Do we have that on our picture? We do. Do we have the length of G EG 17? Is that on our picture? No. So you can write it in if you want or however you would want to do that to remember it. Maybe write it below it so you don't forget we have this piece of information. Whatever you want to do, but it's going to help us in a minute. We want to find the measure of FHG. So F angle FHG, which is this angle. There are a couple ways that we can do this. Um, one of them being alternate interior angles. If this is 31 degrees, which angle is going to be 31? The one I'm pointing to or the one above it? The one above it. Then what do I know about these two angles? They equal 90, right? They make a right angle. So you could do 90 minus 31, which makes 59. Does anybody know option two? You what? Yeah. So he sees that this is a triangle. So add 31 and 90, and then subtract from 180, and you'd still get the same answer. Okay? Perfect. So we got 59 down here. Find the length of HF. Is this a side or a diagonal? It is a diagonal. Is it the diagonal we were given? No. The diagonal we were given was EG, and we knew EG was 17. So let's look at what we know about diagonals with rectangles. Diagonals bisect each other. Are we given any information on HG, HF? Sorry. Yeah, so we don't have any of that, but we do know that diagonals are congruent. So because EG is 17, HF will also be 17. Okay? And then the last would be EFH. If H is going to be alternate interior with this angle down here, what did we say this angle was? 59. 59. So then what will our missing angle be? 59. 59. We got one more. We have a square. Um, we know the length of MK is one half. That's in our picture. That's literally all it gave me. So let's think about what else we know about a square. Uh, what do we know about its sides? They're all congruent. What do we know about the angles? They're right, They're right angles. Good. So I'm going to draw those in. We're going to find the length of PK. Is this a side or a diagonal? A diagonal. So we know that in general, 
diagonals bisect each other. So what's the length of PK going to be? One half. One half. Find the measure of PKN. So this angle right here, we're going to have to look and see um, what properties we think will apply to this angle. I'm going to give you a hint, and it's in the rhombus category. So what property would apply to angle PKN? Diagonals are perpendicular. Diagonals are perpendicular. So then what is the measure of angle PKN? 90. Kinsley, you have earned yourself a piece of candy. I am so sorry. Yes, ma'am. Because it's a property of all rhombuses, and a square is a specific type of rhombus, that where the two diagonals intersect, it forms 90 degrees. So all of these are 90, technically. All right, the last one. We have MNK. M, N, K, which is this piece. It's going to be less than 90 degrees, okay? It's sitting in a corner. It's sitting on a diagonal. So what do we think the property is that's going to help us figure out? Yeah, diagonals bisect the angles. So what is the full measure of angle N? 90. 90. So if you bisect 90, if you cut it in half, how many degrees is that? 45. You're going to flip to the very white section on the back. Right here. So, you're going to keep your paper horizontal. You're going to write the top quadrilaterals. This is just another way to represent all of the properties. I'm not going to wait for you to write in all of the properties. Uh, if you want to do that later, you just put a box to the side and we'll talk about it. So at the top, you're going to put quadrilateral. You can put it in a funky four-sided figure like mine. A quadrilateral are all figures uh, with exactly four sides. So you're going to write that in. And then we're going to fill in this blank. So in all quadrilaterals, the sum of the interior, what does sum mean? Addition. Answer to addition. So if you added all the interior angles, it would equal one number. And what number is that? 360. So it doesn't matter what kind of quadrilateral you have, the angles inside will all add up to 360. Then you have three categories of quadrilaterals. Parallelograms, trapezoids, and kites. We're on the very back on the white. Yep. So parallelograms, trapezoids, and then kites. So what makes a parallelogram a parallelogram is that it has two pairs of parallel sides. I would write that in. Two pairs of parallel sides. A trapezoid you've probably seen before. Does anybody know what makes a trapezoid a trapezoid? It's very similar to a parallelogram. Go down. One pair of parallel sides. There's only four sides, so. So one pair of parallel sides. So you've seen them like jump boxes, if you've ever they use a jump box, usually use them for basketball or volleyball. I don't know if football uses them. A jump box. Yeah. That's trapezoid. 
Um, they usually look like this. They have a wider bottom so that um, you're more stable when you jump on it. Um, but in geometry, you also see some that look like this. What do these little triangles mean? They're parallel. Okay. The last one is a kite. You're not going to see them very often. I'll draw one for you. Um, it looks like a classic, I mean, I don't know if you've ever flown kites before. Um, but instead of opposite sides are congruent, like a parallelogram, um, the side right next to it is congruent. There's nothing really special about them other than that. God bless you, Kinsley. You can just draw the picture. That's what I would do. All right, and then under parallelograms, we're not going to wait for you to do this, but you could put a box. If you like flow charts and you like the way that they look and you want to study it, I put a box off this side so you can put all the properties in it. Um, so you can do that later. These are the four properties that are on your quiz. Um, there are two types of parallelograms. We've been talking about them. A rhombus. And again, you could write these properties another time. Um, and then a rectangle. You do need to write these arrows with the rectangle and rhombus. So you're writing like arrows. It goes in the back of 7.4. And then, what shape is both a rectangle and a rhombus? Square. A square. Maybe I'll just have a square under them. So, once you are finished, you're going to clear your desk of everything but a pencil. Your quiz, um, there is a matching section where there's a picture, and then you have to tell me as specific as possible what shape you're seeing. So you're going to write, if it's a square, you're going to tell me it's a square. Don't tell me it's a square and a rectangle and a rhombus. You tell me specifically this is a square. Does that make sense? It is a matching section, so you put the letter, don't write the word. Make sense? Some of you are listening, some of you are not. Um, and then there's another section where it says write the quadrilateral that fits the property. More than one may apply. So that's the section where you tell me this is a property that applies to a rectangle and a square. That makes sense. So if you have a question, let me know. Is that book already there? Can you put it on the... Yeah, that's fine. Um, that's it. That's it. If you got here late when you're done, can you... You're done, just...